Three Alpha Sessions. Welcome to Alpha Sessions. I'm Gigi, and today I'm here with Sudelia. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great to be here. Yeah, thank you. You're going to play us some amazing music, I believe. Um, first things first, um, how did you guys meet as a band? Like, what was the kind of kernel of the inspiration behind you guys getting together? Like, have you known each other for a really long time, or did you guys meet at uni, or what's the deal? Tom, do you want to take this, or we can kind of... Well, well I guess it kind of stems from me and you. Yeah. Uh, and then also Dan as well, mm. joining, but... Um, well. well, yeah, so I mean, me and Tom met years ago um, in Liverpool. We, we lived there together studying um, and we kind of formed quite quickly formed a kind of musical relationship and then lived away from each other for years um, and Tom in that time met Dan um, in Birmingham he met Aram who's our bassist who's not in this room but is playing on the tracks today as well um, and then uh, we all kind of ended up in, in London about two three years ago and the band kind of slowly came together as a result of that. Um, but the the final piece was Anna. <laughs> and this is the most interesting one, really, because uh, this time last year, we'd only just met Anna. Yeah. Uh, and she, yeah, we just met by chance, really. We were looking for a new housemate and Anna applied on Spare Room. And I saw that yeah. they were musicians and I was like, and then I went and viewed the house and I found out they were in a band. I was like, oh yeah, that's interesting, thinking I'd really like to be in one. Mm. And then, yeah, moved in and sort of managed to worm my way in. Did you make music <laughs> yourself as a solo artist before you guys moved in or was it, yeah. did you only just start when you met these guys? So, uh, yeah, I, um, for my work, I'm a composer and I work in my, um, music for film and TV. So I was, I was already kind of doing a bit of, my own writing but not songwriting which mm. is something that I've had a passion for for a long time but never really developed so it's been really nice yeah. meeting these guys and kind of being able to develop that within a band. Yeah I guess if you're doing things that are for music and TV, for music for TV it's kind of within certain parameters yeah, whereas it, like, it's for a certain story whereas when you're just making something organically you're probably a bit more free. Did you mm. find when you got together at first it was quite a natural you'd met and you all just gelled and it was this alchemical process that just made or do you take a bit of time to like get to know each other's like little quirks and things because it's all it's just like human relationships in general or like musical relationships you get to know people's mm. little foibles and you lock in together how did mm. you guys find it pretty easy i think yeah i mean i guess you i guess you you for, you had the majority of these musical relationships before yeah, the band came together, right? Like you kind of knew. Yeah, you're we, you um, me, uh, Dan and Aram have um, were kind of already in a band mm. before um, I decided to join forces with Michael okay. and form like a super group. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's what we are. That's what we are. Um, but that was more me, Dan and Aram were more jazz. Yeah. Um, so that process of moving from jazz into kind of pop. Um, rock yeah was actually quite a slow process it took a couple of years mm. and um it really helped when anna used her expertise to kind of bring it all together in a songwriting form uh yeah. we always felt like we could do the guitar playing and stuff but it really it really it needed another person's um approach and musical um uh kind of expertise to be able to kind of ground it in a, in a sound. We were kind of floating around a bit for quite a long time, actually. Yeah, yeah so you found it kind of gave it a structure, a sort of like an anchor. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. got you. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the, the jazz influence, because on listening to your music, the track that you've got out on Spotify, I kind of, I could hear the people that came to my mind initially were like uh, Kurt Vile, mm -hmm. a bit of Max DeMarco, a little bit of the war on drugs, like just kind of very, um, kind of cinematic, um, very kind of sun-drenched. Um, it kind of makes me feel like I'm, I'm maybe underwater and there's sunlight coming down <laughs> on top of me. But the kind of chords that you use are not um, the kind that I, you find in a lot of standard like indie pop stuff. There's a lot more interesting voicings and kind of chord coloring there. Um, would you say that came from like sort of a jazz background or? Um, maybe more universal, I think, but I'm sure uh, subconsciously it was coming through. 
definitely. Mm. Um, yeah, another influence that I maybe sort of quietly bring to the group is uh, Wilco, mm. the, the rock oh, okay. who I really yeah. like. And um, actually, I think the groove of Out of Shape um, really reminds me of a lot of Wilco esque songs. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. But also, like all of those artists that you just mentioned, are artists that uh, we definitely are influenced by, and yeah. it's really yeah. nice to hear that you mm. um, associate that track with those artists because we are um, definitely big cut bar lovers. Big cut bar lovers. Yeah, and, he's um, amazing. Mm. Exactly. I think the jazz sound. It's like it, it was always going to be there, um, but we had to really push to not be jazz. Right. That okay. was. Uh, and try and stay pop. Um, yeah. And what was it, it that prompted grounded. that decision that you kind of wanted? It was it like a conscious thing if you didn't want to be put in a certain kind of pigeonhole or? For me, at least, it was the feeling of I love lyrics and I love pop lyrics that are accessible okay. and catchy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that can't happen in jazz, but I think I love music that is stems from that kind of um Beatlesy uh kind of yeah. tree of uh um influences and um Yeah, it's like proper yeah. storytelling within pop where you can latch onto the lyrics mm. as much as it's just about the sonics. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. I'm a lyric girly. It's like the first thing I latch onto when I'm yeah. listening to mm. music, so I yeah. get that completely. Also, yeah. I guess I guess it's a melody thing as well, right? Because I'm like, even though I write a lot of lyrics uh, in uh, for, for the songs, I'm like the the actual melody writing is like the more important thing from my perspective. And I think again, it's like that yeah it's that accessibility isn't it and just like writing songs that i guess just writing songs that we love mm -hmm. and also the ultimate aim of being rock stars like, <laughs> like, like that's you know uh, i love it you, you honesty, honesty, honesty so, about the ambition yeah, i love this um yeah that's always the ambition so but so, i think yeah. it's quite interesting that um you know you, you're saying you're kind of um maybe slightly more melody driven but like I, th I think it's interesting when we get together mm. and write, write lyrics together, we have quite different approaches. And I think often yours are a bit more, I would say more poetic than mine and more kind of... Don't know about that. No, but they're, they're, more, <laughs> they're less kind of yeah. decipherable. And I, I find yeah. them really interesting. But then I'm a bit more like sort of direct in... Yeah, your lyrics, you can, actually you can actually listen to them and understand them, no, but it's mine. Nice to my, have, it's I, I nice kind of hide have. behind mine a little bit. But well, yeah, go on. But uh, my point is that it's nice yeah. to have a bit of both. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think it's been really nice us writing together and bringing those two kind of techniques. It's been great. Yeah, it's been yeah, really good, actually. It's been very, like, easy. Because I think mm. even, even from the first time we were, like, writing... Uh, Senses, which is our next single that's coming out at the end of September that you will hear later. Um, we kind of got together and like wrote the first and second verse and the chorus like fairly quickly, actually, didn't we? Mm. And we kind of helped each other out on like certain bits. And uh, yeah, yeah, make a good team. Yeah, it's a good process. Did you find it easy to collaborate together lyrically? Because especially, I guess, coming from a background where if particularly you, Anna, have been working on... Uh, songs that are very structured and I don't know if you were writing those on your own or whether perhaps you were writing on your own as well sometimes when you try and join that together with someone else it can be a little um there's a bit of a rub there sometimes where yeah. you have to you're kind of editing yourselves and each other and then sometimes it just works really seamlessly like how did you guys find that well I think it was it was interesting that we started writing lyrics to, together quite soon after I moved in and, and we met and I think for a lot of people writing lyrics is quite a self-conscious thing and mm. it's quite a personal thing but it was quite nice to be able to just get in a room together and be like because that song we literally just we didn't really go away and think about it too much we just kind of got together and said and kind of sat there in a room like in silence sometimes just kind of thinking and like writing stuff down and saying how about this and it you know just kind of immediately coming out of our brains um, so it was nice uh, yeah I feel like it it was very organic in that sense um but also i felt like i wasn't too self-conscious about it because we were both just completely sharing like what what we were thinking of mm. in that in that moment yeah that's cool because i think it really speaks to how comfortable you feel with each other if you feel like you're on that level when you come yeah. to write something if you feel like you can 
make suggestions and no one's going to take it super personally mm. or yeah mm. that's awesome well first of all we're going to hear your upcoming single senses which i believe is out at the end of september amazing stuff this is sedelia with senses Alpha Sessions. Welcome back, guys. This is Alpha Sessions, and I'm here with Sedelia, and that was Senses. Beautiful track. Um, can you speak to a little bit of the s- initial spark of like the inspiration for this song? Well, I mean, it started. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been in the works for a while. I mean, you, uh, Tom, you came up with the initial kind of um, musical idea for it, right? And then yeah. it went through a number of different. Um, kind of versions, uh, all sorts of subject matters um, came up um, in this song, uh, including uh, the Dungeons and Dragons, the Dungeons Dragons themes, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, we had a little bit of a crisis that? with the song about yeah, uh, a while ago, and um, it, it coincided with, um, with uh, so I'm just completely outing you as a nerd here, Tom, but, um, <laughs> but it coincided with Tom starting a Dungeons and Dragons um, kind of meet up uh, kind of among kind of our friends who like live near us Amazing. and um, and yeah we were like and, and kind of one afternoon we were trying to we were workshopping lyrics and the form of the song and everything and we were just like yeah let's just that's what's on our minds at the moment so let's just like make it a fun song about that I'm really glad that that didn't happen in the end. But it was probably um, slightly helpful. But, but it maybe like, it had to happen in some ways. We had to get it out of our system, maybe. Yeah, but also I know you're, just kind of create, you know, thinking about the form of it and the rhythms. 
Yeah. Uh, which obviously, you know, the lyrics t- totally changed. It's not about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, you'll be glad to know. Yeah. Yeah. Chill if it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, so, so it just turned from that into a, a, a boring love song. Bo- yeah. I, I guess it was. I guess it was a bit of a ballad initially, and then it and then it went into the Valandor thing, and then. But even the Valandor thing, it was a bit of a love song between the two. Was it the two wizards yeah, who were like wizards, in it? Yeah. Um, so there's always been some kind of relationship yeah. drama going on in that song, <laughs> yeah. uh, whether it's wizards or between two lovers. Yeah. So. so um, um, I love it. And it's yeah. in the fantastical realm. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm a massive like Lord of the Rings nerd, so okay. I'm all yeah. I'm down with nice. that. That's fine. Um, in terms of the sound of the song, though, because obviously we, we you know um, what we just played is is very much an acoustic version. The the the, the version that's coming out on Spotify is is a lot more. I don't know how to. I don't know why I describe it as in terms of like something similar to something, but it is. It's quite driven. It's quite dream poppy. Mm. I'd, I like to think there are some, like some of the vocal harmonies in it are a little bit Fleetwood Mac esque, mm. which I always like. I always found I, that that's that's if there was one band that yeah. I always when we were ro- writing this song in the process of it, I was always like really. Um, I, I just I, mm. I like obviously so many people because it's such a huge record, but like like the Fleetwood Mac like rumors sound is like just like uh, th- it's just the best like, perfect I think. record in my the, opinion yeah, the if, there ex- if there exists one yeah. it's that that blend of like the harmonies in itself is like its own texture like you could easily mm. imagine that being a pad or like yeah. something that someone put on a plug-in or something like it's mm. gorgeous mm. with the recording side of things do you record everything in a live room tracking it together as a band or do you like do you do everything kind of at home, like in the box, what's the vibe with the production? I think for this, uh, yeah, first of all, shout out to our produ- producer, uh, Andrea Lapori. Um, Legend. Yeah, who's, who's been working with us for... Um, From the start. Yeah, basically, yeah. And um, yeah, I think this one we recorded, um, we recorded it fairly live, didn't we, at Hackney Road, was it? We recorded mm-hmm. it, well, it, start, it started off in my bedroom. As yeah, the demos. It all does. As, as a lot of yeah. stuff does nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Into uh, Ableton, and then I sent it to Michael, and he immediately sent back lyrics that on a voice note mm-hmm. that weirdly synced, so I could just put them into Ableton, and then sent it back to him like, "This is your voice note, but with the thing, which was a bit odd, uh, but it was cool." Nice. And, and that initial I've just melody. I've got such impeccable timing, don't I? Like, um, it's got a great sense yeah. of uh, yeah. template. Synchronicities, um, yeah. baby. Mm. That was always there from the start. We What 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 we usually do um, when me and Michael write songs together um, is uh, I send him an idea and then he sends back a vocal idea and it's, it's usually something in that vocal idea will stay forever mm. in the song. Yeah. And um, for the song census, it's the post-chorus. So that's always been there. Got you, yeah. Um, so yeah, it started in bedroom, and then we went into the studio, recorded it. Uh, actually, a couple of times in different studios, some demoy things. Then we went in and did a kind of uh, one take where we we had it out of the studio, and then we worked on it from there really. Um, but we had the kind of drums, bass, um, guitars, and guitar solo, and um, yeah. Uh, but it took a while, and it this is what I mean. It took Anna moving in to kind of. Um, turn what we had from recorded music that was half done into mm. a song and that was the last bit of process and that took another um, eight months actually because we, yeah. we all have different jobs and it's bits and bobs and it's it's a long process doing what you can it's yeah. amazing through if it was an eight month eight month process do you, did you find it quite easy to keep because you were saying from the original voice note there's like a Sometimes first takes, I check myself now before I even do a guide because I'm like, this will probably be the one that you end up keeping mm. from experience because there's, there's a certain rawness that's in that first one that is really mm. hard to replicate if you try mm. and re-record it perfectly. Mm. Did you find that was easier, easy to kind of hold on to through that process or uh, did you kind of have to do a few takes towards the end of it before you got back in the vibe? Because I, I vacillate massively between those two mm. poles. I mean, I mean, the song went from. I mean, from the first instance, like the song probably got like ten BPM quicker, and like mm-hmm. I don't, it, 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 you know, it, it went, it, it transformed so much, despite that they're still being, the, the generally speaking, the same chords and the same kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it went through a lot. I mean, I think we had like finger clicking on it at one point, didn't we? So yeah, it's so, been so, a bit so, like, so, in, so in some ways, it's like yeah, like yeah. I, I think. I, I, I'm similar. Like I love, I love the first recording of anything, even yeah. if it sounds like. If it actually sounds, you know, 
technically bad. I do I do love that, but it's like, yeah, given that the, 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 the form of the song changed so much and everything, it's like, I think in the end, we kind of made something that was was so distinct from what it was originally that it didn't didn't matter so much right um and it was really i think it really was like when i think when me and anna went into the studio and recorded our uh, initially recorded our vocals on it on, on what we kind of settled on it kind of felt like it really that's when it felt like it really fell into place which is really nice because it felt like we'd it felt like all that work that we'd gone through with that song yeah. um which we took we tore our hair out a little bit with it it felt yeah. it really felt worth it at that point yeah it's like <clears throat> the whole process eventually you just get to the point where you're like oh should we just scrap this com- whole thing and throw it in the bin but i'm glad yeah. you didn't because it's a beautiful track yeah. um Thank next you. thing we're going to hear from you guys is out of shape which is the first single um which was released back in may uh, so you're going to play an acoustic version of that for us. This is Sedelia with Out of Shape. The Alpha Sessions. From listening, my first listen to that track, this is the one that's already out on Spotify. It kind of, the atmosphere of the track is one of those, to me, one of those really chilled, sun-drenched, kind of um, blissed out kind of summer day vibes. I was listening to the lyrics, and you can tell me if I'm I'm way off with this, but the lyrics, like, it's easy to drop by, like, that kind of made me think of how easy it is like when you're looking at social media to like tune in and out of like world events that are going on or like your friends lives or even like conversely you could look at it tuning in and out of your own life because it's like you know one minute you're looking and scrolling 
through like all of these things going on and you're uh, you're interacting with it and next minute you can detach like is that did that have any uh in seed of the inspiration for the song or am i completely no, way like, off i think i think you're pr pretty much there like i didn't like i think that's an interesting that's really interesting I, I never thought of that like that lyric never that particular lyric never had like a double meaning to me but i think it it, it, it kind of works i quite I, I quite like that in that like i think like that is the vibe of the song like um to be honest like when yeah when we wrote it it was more the sound of the song that then like influenced the lyrics it was kind of like yeah this sounds like okay. i'm driving along like a, a, a road in la like uh, that's what it feels like it feels like i'm driving along so that kind of that kind of influenced it and then like the idea of like i mean i guess what like i've no, i mean i've never been to la but the idea of what la is is like it's very kind of um it kind of like embodies a lot of like you know i guess like modern life like living in a bit of a dream world mm. when actually like you're surrounded by like you know everything's actually on fire and there's <laughs> not really enough water and like you know and, and everyone's a bit fake and everyone's just try, you know everyone's trying to like push out a kind of fake image of themselves or an image that you know that, that, that takes your attention away from what's going on um so yeah that was kind of that that's kind of what it morphed into in that sense um so yeah i think like you're spot on with 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 that interpretation to be honest um so yeah like that's yeah that's kind of yeah that's kind of what it morphed into it yeah. kind of feels like almost the theme of like escapism which i mm. suppose you could say like la and that dream life and all of all of what that sort of glittering scene kind of promises and yeah. i feel like maybe social media can be in a similar sense it can be escapist if that's what you make it do you yeah find it like especially being in music so much of what you do is connected to social media now it's very it's nigh on impossible to <clears throat> kind of be in this industry without that do you find when you're creating things it's quite easy to detach yourself from how you're being perceived like from what other people are going to think of it until after you release something or it's time to release it or do you find you have to really kind of defend those boundaries quite a lot like within yourselves I think that, well, ever since I've been a part of the band, it just feels very much like we're going to, you know, write what we want to write and be the people that we are. I think we're all quite, there are a lot of different personalities in the band. Um, so it would be quite hard for us to have like one particular image of ourselves as a band all the time and to be too worried about that. Um, I think that would be a bit there wouldn't be a lot of points so we we i i don't know i i don't spend a lot of time worrying about that kind of thing and that's been very freeing i think for me um but i'm aware that you guys kind of do a lot more of the actual social media like important stuff like making sure we do have some kind of presence and mm -hmm. um you know marketing when we have gigs and and stuff like that so it is really important and you know you can't it's not easy to detach yourself from it completely, but I think that um, we just try and have fun. And when we post things a lot of the time, it's just us kind of having fun and, you know, doing, just doing thing. our thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's so refreshing to hear that because with a lot of artists, particularly a lot of solo artists that I speak mm. to, they really struggle with like the kind of external perception. And if they're working with a label or management, especially it's so to do with numbers mm. and streams and, like how many monthly listeners you have and it's very much mm. to do with the metrics but it's lovely to hear that you guys very much seem to come yeah. back to the creative um free-flowing kind of like kernel of the thing mm. which yeah. is lovely yeah i think when we started as a band it was always like make music with really good friends mm -hmm. yeah that's the ethos it's mm. it's, it's it's really for a Ma making music is is for um, mental health positivity. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of um, having an outlet and having a uh, mindful thing in this crazy world. Um, if it was about taking it into the metrics and figures, it would defeat that purpose. That doesn't mean that we don't want to be successful. <laughs> no, like, it's both <laughs> and. But right. like, I think we've we we have so much fun i th yeah. i think um when we get together and um yeah. it's that's 
if anything else comes of it, then that's great. But it's really about that. And I guess yeah. coming from a jazz background, there's never been... It, that's very one of the things that jazz does really well. It's, like, it's just for the music often. Yeah. And this is... Um, in that in that mindset but we make kind of pop rock uh, records but uh, I think one thing I would say about the social media <laughs> stuff is um, <laughs> that um, <laughs> Dan, by the way Dan's our social media manager um, <laughs> we um, um, uh, sometimes I think I make silly videos and pop them up <laughs> online and then for some, and Vito, so yeah and Dan yeah. and Vito or someone will be like it's funny for you and m- maybe Michael who will get that joke but <laughs> no one else will get it and that's not <laughs> like do you remember do you remember we had some things yeah. like that oh, yeah. it's like, we had um, a particular photo didn't we of yeah. all of us yes and yeah, what was yeah. That? it oh, was a photo that was that stupid photo of us at Strong yeah. oh I, I actually quite <laughs> liked that yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair. I don't even know what you're talking about and it was really silly oh, Well, which, it, we, which we directed and I was like making a silly face in it. Was that one? Was that yeah, one yeah, yeah, about? basically. Yeah, yeah. And it was but like we go on. I, I had to be a bit like, guys. I know that this is really funny for us, and mm, like we yeah. know it's a joke. But if we put this up, people yeah. are going to think like, are these guys yeah. for real? Who do they think they are? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I guess yeah, there's, you have to be a bit conscious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's a thing, though, isn't it? That's where like everyone in the band has their kind of has their say in things. Because I think if it was. I think if it was say just down to me and Tom, if we were just like a duo, I think we, it would be incredibly. It would be like overly flamboyant and very, 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 very silly. Yeah, yeah. silly. Yeah. Um, very, very silly. S- um, silly Delia. Silly Delia. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Love there you go. that. There you go. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that should be. That could be an offshoot, couldn't it? Yeah. Or oh, like electro pop. Like. Yeah. Let's talk about this later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to listen to your final track. This is Sedelia with Willow. Alpha Sessions. All right, welcome back. This is Alpha Sessions, and we're on with Sedelia, and that was Willow. Lyric from that one that jumped out at me was floating high in my telescope. Mm. What is that metaphor attached to? Um, so, so this is this is a song that we kind of got in the works at the moment. We've not, you know, it's not in its final form yet. Um, so that is a bit of a sneak peek, I guess. 
um, and we've actually got we've got a live video um, coming up kind of in at the end of the year. We've got a few more singles actually before we go. We've got so Census coming out in in September. Then around October November time, we've got another track called What Is It To Be coming out, and then we've got Ghosts coming out probably around what Christmas New Year sort of time, which is a lovely yeah, ballad yeah. that Anna wrote. Um, like yeah, they're, they're all great tracks. Um, and then around that time as well, we've got a live video coming out, which will feature Willow. Um, will feature another unreleased track as well. So we've got like quite a lot lined up in that sense, which is really exciting. Mm. Um, but in terms of yeah, floating high on my telescope. Um, yeah, Willow. Like, like it, I guess it's a bit of a running theme at least with like senses and 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 Willow. Like there's. You know, it is a kind of a bit of a ballad, a bit of a breakup kind of song. Right. Um, I know, yeah, awful, yeah. I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've had a rough you time. Um, you, you're, you're the encourager of all of this, really. You're, you, you want us to just write, like, heartbreak songs all the time. Um, I'm just following your lead um, and making making situations up. Um, but, um, no, nah, joking. But, um, but I guess, like, yeah, playing hard it's all, it, it, to bring it back to the social media thing, I think that's another thing. It's like, it's... Um, uh, you know, like it's it's hard to, it's hard to proper, properly burn bridges like in in this day and age. And I think mm. you know, if you come out of a a thing with someone or whatever, it's so easy for them to kind of still be on the horizon in your mind mm. because you know that you're going to see stuff on social media from them or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it was a bit of a reference to that, and also uh, beyond the social media stuff, just kind of uh, I guess it's just about like. I think people are often kind of in denial about the idea of like getting over something mm. like like that thing's always going to be there and that you're always you're still going to think of someone yeah. um and I think to deny that is kind of um you know not being you know human. Uh, not not being human and not yeah. being genuine it's like it's not really you're you're kind of lying to yourself and I think it's like people put on this very like brave face of like oh yeah you know that's done mm. dusted it's like well no but that that's always it's always going to kind of be a part of you yeah so like um yeah, it, it's it's basically a reference to that. I think it's the nuance of the situation as well, isn't it? Cause yeah. It's like you're always going to have a curiosity about what's going on with someone, even though you might have like time might have gone by. It's just, it's just like human nature to like wonder. And now it's like never been easier to just like check up on someone. I mean, we've all done it and we've yeah. all had it like done to us. And it's always going to, you know, if you see that person's name pop up on your stories because everybody checks who's watched their stories, don't say yeah. you don't. <laughs> but like it, you're always going to feel something like even when that when that comes up. So I think it's it's cool to acknowledge like the the both end of the situation. It's just like a natural human curiosity. Um, yeah. have, do you have any more live shows coming up for us? So we're currently in the process of booking something in the new year. Uh, nothing confirmed yet, but it will be a headline show somewhere in London to celebrate the release of all the new singles. Yeah. Um, we're anticipating around late January, uh, maybe a bit later. If uh, it just depends on what venues are saying, but yeah, we're we're fairly close to booking something. Amazing. Um, yeah, and hopefully more off the box, off yeah. the back of all the stuff and we're putting out. We've yeah. got a lot of writing plans coming up, haven't we? Yeah. I think. We've got our. Um, Cedelia holiday coming up. Are we going to get <laughs> oh. It's all holiday. It's a, ret it's a retreat. Oh, it's a retreat. I'm so jealous. Yeah. So this is when when Tom talks about like having fun and like just be, you know, it mm. being it being it just being something in our lives which just like brings us joy. I think that's a really good example of it. Like we do go away when we can and like have a little like weekend of like writing and you know yeah. Take over a Airbnb, yeah. uh, put up a drum kit, put up our speakers, <laughs> and then hopefully, that. if it's the right Airbnb, rock out until the early morning. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully and, the and people I'll, who own that Airbnb aren't listening. Just terrorising the neighbours. But also, but also, hopefully, and this will make you really jealous. Um, our drummer um, is also um, the, a builder of mobile saunas, <gasps> so on the next retreat, potentially what? we might have. <laughs> A sauna, yeah, my boss a wood burning sauna. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you guys yeah. gonna have an amazing time? Have you, where sure. are you guys off to? Essex. Sick. Sunny Essex. Yeah. But, um, Hopefully sunny Essex. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got loads more songs coming out, which is great. Cause they're done basically. So yeah. we've yeah. kind of done the hard work. So da, 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 and then we'll do another gig. Yeah. Uh, and so we've did one already. Um, but yeah, should Just be cool. Getting them ready for us to hear. Amazing. Yeah. And you're on your social media, is you're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Spotify, everywhere people would want to find you. 
Amazing. Yeah. That is Sedelia. If you want to get a f- more of a fill of like what's left of the summer sunshiny vibes and to see us through to winter and give us a bit of joy, I would highly recommend. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. The Alpha Sessions.